here to sew today on Always and Forever. We have such a special guest. She's one of the sweetest girls you'll ever meet. Miss Florida's Outstanding Team 2017, Reese Weaver. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. I'm so excited about this. Oh my golly, when you told me this, I was like, ah, this is gonna be so fun. <laughs> oh, it's been the best. Um, so to sort of kick it off, can you just sort of share um, who you are, where you're from, and how you got involved in the Outstanding Teen Program? Yeah, so I was born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida, and um, I kind of got it, got it, that's not a word. <laughs> I um, got started um, when I was a Sunshine Princess, I think I was around seven or eight, um, and I had the best misses um, and mentors, and I was like, whoa, I want to be her. <laughs> um, and they really inspired me to just, you know, do pageants. And it wasn't just that, but like having dance as my passion, it was just kind of a, um, another outlet for me to perform on stage. And, you know, with scholarship money, I was like, whoa, this is just, you know, a total package. So, um, you know, but really as a sunshine princess, I had amazing mentors that were like, you know, the sweetest people ever. And I wanted to be just like them. <laughs> That's amazing. I know that um, the first year that I competed, you were the reigning Miss Florida's Outstanding Team. Oh, I remember yeah. walking past all the Sunshine Princesses and Princes, and you were walking past too, and they uh, just had star eyes. You know, they really look up to the title holders. Um, and so it's it's a really special thought yeah. that the sure. title holders and the um, Sunshine Prince and Princesses share. Yeah, so. Sure. Um, being a Sunshine Princess inspired you to be Miss Florida's Outstanding Teen. Um, <laughs> what was your greatest takeaway from your year of service? Yeah, so, you know, this is going to be such the pageant cliche answer. <laughs> but literally just meeting every single person that you could possibly, possibly meet in any opportunity or experience, um, you know, you never know who you're going to meet and the doors that could be open um, are just kind of endless. And I think that that just kind of reminds you about, like, you know, like, seriously, you never know who you're going to meet and being able just to connect with people, um, whether that's, you know, a five-year-old or, you know, a senior citizen. And I think that is something that was so important is just communicating with others, getting to know people's stories and testimonies and sharing mine. And um, I think that was just one of the biggest things that I took away is um, communication and sharing just your passions and love for others. Yes. Is there a specific memory that you have from your year? Oh my golly. There's so many. I think one of my favorite things was actually the um, University of Florida uh, Children's Miracle Network Marathon. And from that, um, you know, I got to meet so many amazing miracle kids who just are my inspiration, you know, today. Um, and, you know, they're, they're everybody's superheroes. So I was like, ah, just getting to meet them um, and just talk with them. And, um, you know, even we, it was with few other girls and title holders and we all just um shared a little bit about ourselves you know who we are why we were here um and getting to be in front of you know thousands of students who are doing what they love um and you know the miracle families and children that was just one of the best experiences ever because we had so much fun we played games um we had some food <laughs> we just had such a ball and i i really really um really cherish that memory yeah that partnership is absolutely amazing yeah I remember seeing that post and just thinking wow these title holders they genuinely care about these kids and see them and you know that's a cause that's so close to my heart and so yeah, it's absolutely. awesome to see our state and really our country rally around that yes yes <laughs> they're awesome oh my gosh <laughs> So now you're just finishing up your freshman year at the University of Alabama. God. <laughs> you see that MAO team scholarship. Oh, um, yes. Um, and I know that you're on the Bama dance team. What's it been like performing in the stadium and at different events on campus throughout this year? I 
you know, I never really saw myself going, you know, and auditioning for a dance team. Um, I was, you know, I was brought up in a middle and high school for the performing arts. And so I never had the opportunity of, you know, cheering on my uh, school sports necessarily. <laughs> and, um, you know, what other way to, you know, audition for a program that not only has an amazing dance team program, but also, you know, the athletics at the University of Alabama are amazing. And to say that I have the opportunity to um, cheer on the Crimson Tide is such a huge honor. Um, just to have that script A on my chest is, you know, something that I really, really um, started to work for. And it was a really big goal and dream of mine um, my senior year, kind of the beginning of my senior year. Um, I knew that, you know, the Lord blessed so many girls who were state representatives with a full ride to the University of Alabama. And, um, you know, with having that, I really got interested in um, the dance program as a major and um, the Alabama dance team. So once I started working really, really hard for that, um, you know, I I still am on cloud nine, you know, to this day. Um, I still can't wrap my head around it that, you know, I have that blessing and honor to cheer on the tides. That is just such an amazing kind of just cherry on the top of my year. And oh my gosh, I just, oh, those girls are the best and my coach is the best. And I absolutely love University of Alabama and getting to say roll tide every single day. <laughs> campus oh my gosh it's beautiful <laughs> I'm a little biased though <laughs> what has been your favorite event to perform at with the team you know it has to go back and forth with basketball and football but I would probably say football um just because I mean love the Crimson Tide and some football <laughs> um Saturdays in Bryant Denny Stadium are unforgettable um, anybody who just goes to at least one Alabama football game, I know that they're going to be like, whoa, I went to an Alabama football game. I mean, that's any SEC school. That's, you know, the University of Florida. That's, um, you know, just, just so many, like Auburn, <laughs> any, any really big SEC school. Um, just, it's such an awesome memory and experience. And um, football is just, it's, We've always loved football, and you know, I grew up as a Texas A&M fan. Uh, I was about to say family fan, um, and you know, having to kind of change my wardrobe to more crimson than maroon was a little hard. But um, I have to say, football. We we love some football. So <laughs> I remember seeing um, your dad. He has he converted to Bama from Aggie to Bama. That oh yeah, he definitely has. <laughs> definitely has a lot more crimson <laughs> now <laughs> <All the baggies. laughs> yeah and actually my dad got the same shoes that um we got and they're gray it has like a script a like on the side of them they're they're nikes and i was like did you get those like did you know i had those too and he was like oh no i just got these before you did and i was like no <laughs> Yeah, he definitely converted. <laughs> He's so sweet, so supportive. Um, I know that ministry is also something that you're super passionate about. Um, so can you talk a little bit about your involvement with the Well Tuscaloosa and all the campus ministry that you've um, been able to do? Yeah, so that was one of my first things coming to Alabama. Um, I know for anybody transitioning into you know, college, um, it's definitely a big jump and having to move away from your, you know, your church home and, um, you know, your Bible studies and just so many amazing people that just flood into your life. Um, I knew I was going to be missing some of that. And so that was one of my first priorities was getting plugged in into a ministry and a church that I would just really fall in love with. And it was hard because University of Alabama has so many different churches on campus, which is awesome. Um, but one of my dearest friends who is on dancing with me, um, her name is Katie Newman, and she's like my mom. 
<laughs> pretty much. <laughs> um, and she was like, hey, you should go to the well on Wednesdays. And it's pretty much just um, a night where all college kids can just come in. Um, we have a worship service and then a sermon. Um, and so I was like, okay, I'll go with you. So I went, um, and I, I have just, I can't even explain the amount of gracious, most sweetest, most God-fearing, inspiring people I, I met at the well. Um, you know, these college students just gave me a hope of like, oh my word, these kids are fully invested in their relationship with Jesus and just are always, you know, reaching out to me and reaching out to just so many people to help inspire them and, um, you know, lead them to the Lord. And I was like, this is something that I want to be a part of. And so um, it's also plugged. It's with Calvary Baptist Church there, and it's kind of their college, um, I guess, service. Um, so I was like, okay, let me try Calvary's um, just normal church on Sunday. And so I went and I was like, all right, Lord, that was pretty easy. I, I tried two other churches and they were awesome, but um, definitely Calvary and um, the Well Tuscaloosa are so, so special to me. <laughs> it's so important to find that church family. Yeah. Being an upcoming senior, that's something that I'm really thinking about. I need to get involved, get plugged into the campus ministry wherever I end up going. So that's sure. so encouraging to hear. Um, yeah. What are some of your future short-term slash long-term goals that you have? Yeah, so of course, graduate from the University of Alabama. <laughs> um, so many things. Um, short-terms, they always change daily <laughs> um, just because I have so many things I want to do um, in the next four years at um, Bama. And, but really, in terms of long-term, um, my dream is to be on Broadway, um, to be a dancer um, in New York City, and um, I actually want to write a book. <laughs> never would ever, like, think about writing a book. And I've had some really awesome professors um, in college who, in English specifically, and who have really, really impacted my life, and I was like, wow, that's just give her a go, I guess. <laughs> so that's like just, I guess, a short-term um, slash long-term um, goal, but so many things. I want to, you know, travel the world, of course, and do as much as I can um, physically as a dancer, just because I know um, my dance career dancing is definitely a shorter one than a lot of careers. Um, but then afterwards, I would love to teach. I would love to, you um, you know, inspire younger dancers to keep dancing and live out their dream. Um, and, and everything that I do, glorify the Lord because he's the one that gave it to me. <laughs> do you have any book um, ideas, like what you want to write about? Yeah, so I actually kind of started to write it. <laughs> um, honestly, it's not very, I guess, organized right now, but it's going to be, hopefully, hopefully. Um, I mean, it could go all over the place, but I want to do it for incoming freshmen into college. Um, I started just writing some like days I had and, you know, thoughts I had throughout my first semester in college. And I was like, you know, this is such a big transition and jump into something that you really kind of find who you are as a person and how you handle, you know, kind of being by yourself in a lot of situations. And so I was like, maybe I should really write a book about this, <laughs> just about my experience. So I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'm so excited. I hope to read it one day. <gasps> Amazing. Um, you give such great advice and encouragement. You're so sweet. My light just. Throughout this year, I'm so thankful for you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh. I, I, that means so much to me. And I mean, if only I could just impact one person's life, like that's, that's my goal. <laughs> so I have some super fun questions that I ask every guest that's on Always and Forever. And Yay. so are you ready? 
<laughs> Who is your favorite forever Miss Florida slash Miss America? Okay, so that's very, very hard. <laughs> you can pick a couple. <laughs> and I apologize before my light just went off. So that was really embarrassing. I was like, Ugh, let me just plug that back in. Okay, anyways. Um, oh my word. There are just so many people. And honestly, before like I even say this, like every Miss Florida, every Miss America, I feel like has just fulfilled, you know, their year with just so much of um, just impact. Like they, they just are amazing people that I look up to. But if I had to choose... I think I would have to say, so one of my favorite um, Miss Florida's is Mary Catherine uh, Fechtel, and she was actually the reigning Miss Florida my first year um, competing. And I, I knew from being a Sunshine Princess, um, she was a teen, and she is just really, really special. Oh my word. She has this light and this grace about her that I just hope to have at least half of that. <laughs> she sincerely, I, I remember one memory was, um, I think we had like a mom and daughter, like luncheon, I guess, um, during the, during orientation, I believe. And she, you know, went up and talked a little bit, and she was like, all right, you know what, we're going to pray before our meal, and, um, you know, I want to kind of share a little bit about my testimony, and share a little bit about what the Lord has done in my life, and for me, I mean, like, my first year competing, I never saw that before, like, having somebody really just come out, and like, I'm unapologetic about my faith, and we're about to do this. And so I just sat there. Honestly, I got like tears in my eyes because I was like, I want to be just like her. I want to have that grace and that poise and just that authenticity that she has is just so beautiful. So I really look up to her and so many other Miss Florida's that I have impacted my <laughs> first year I competed. You know, you were my Miss Florida's outstanding teen. And <laughs> orientation, I started crying just because of um, how real you were and how encouraging you were and you said just what you just said there I'm unapologetic about my faith and um that was really encouraging to hear especially that first year competing I'd never done any of this before and um it was great yeah. on that so sweet well I mean just know that there's so many other people that have just impacted my life and they really have made me become um, the Reese I am today, and if it wasn't for the Lord and giving me this opportunity, I mean, I don't know where I would be. I wouldn't be here talking to you. <laughs> I'd just probably be very, very shy and very scared to talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> life. Um, okay, so what was your favorite area of competition when you were competing? So, of course, dance, getting to perform on stage for my talent, um, that was by far just another, like I said, like another way for me to just, you know, share my passion and do it on stage and perform. But I really love fitness. <laughs> I think it's just like one of those stress-free kind of portions where you can go out there, just have so much fun. Like, when do you have the opportunity to go out there in a cute little, you know, like, activewear outfit and I think it's I don't know it's just so much fun like you get to interact with the audience and the judges and they're smiling back and you're just having a good time I just think it's like a party on stage <laughs> I completely agree it's so fun so much fun I love it <laughs> your best piece of pageant advice especially for girls who are going to be competing this August for Miss Florida's Outstanding Team sure um you know everybody says you know to be yourself which literally like that really 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 is important um each of you have such a gift and have different desires and hopes and dreams and passions and what you have to offer and bring to the table is you know different than the girl sitting next to you and um you know I really got to see that honestly after my reign was over with getting to kind of reflect back on 
you know, what, like how, how, you know, does judging work or, you know, how does like winning work, but really in reality, if you know whose you are and your, and your worth, like it shouldn't matter crown or no crown, sash or no sash, like you're going in there, you're being your true authentic self and being, you know, your down to earth self that, I mean, you should take away, you know, how much you've grown and how much you've impacted others and just the confidence that you gain out of it. Um, and I think if you just go in there, you're being your true, true self um, and have a good time. Like that's literally the best piece of advice I could give. And I know that's a lot harder to do <laughs> because it is scary. And, um, you know, you meet some incredible girls and they're, they have the same hopes and dreams as you do. And, but really in reality, if you're just competing with yourself, I feel like you should walk away knowing that you did that and you did that by yourself. And that is um, something you should always just remember that nobody else can get you what you want. It, it comes from you. It comes from your passion and how hard you work. Um, but if you do it with a mindset of, you know what, I'm going to be myself and I'm going to show others that, you know, this is what I have to offer. Like that's literally literally it like just go in there have fun and be your best self <laughs> <laughs> yeah when you get out of that competing with others and just competing against yourself it completely right. changes your mindset and you they yes. say comparison is a thief of joy and you compare yourself to the other girls you start feeling down about yourself and yes. it's a bad mindset to be in it really is. And, and two, like if you embrace who you are as an individual, I mean, you can't, you won't leave any regrets, you know, I guess I, don't know. I just, uh, I wish I could just like shake someone and be like, go be yourself. Seriously. Like don't compare yourself. I know. I'm in trouble. <laughs> right. Be yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> And how can people keep up with you on social media and follow everything that you're up to? Yeah, so I have Facebook, Instagram. Um, I'm starting a YouTube channel, but it, it's, yeah. I need to get like better quality instead of like just my phone videoing things. Anyways, <laughs> you can follow me, um, Reese, R-E-E-C-E underscore Christine. Um, Christ, I, and E, and then there's two E's at the end. <laughs> um, and then Facebook, just Reese Weaver. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much for coming on and giving all that amazing advice and sharing some awesome stories with me. I know that everyone has been so excited to watch your interview. Oh. <laughs> so I'm so excited to watch others. Like, ah, this is going to be so much fun. I love it. Well, I'll talk to you later. Okay, girl. Love you. Thank you. Bye.